This is a machine that I've been looking for for quite a while and I managed to buy one a, a few months ago and uh, I'm not sure whether it's a computer or a calculator actually. It looks like a computer, it runs basic but it's very similar to the handheld Casio sort of calculator pocket computers that also run basic. So the basics actually got a floating point up to an exponent of 99 and so on. When I got it it was actually broken though. I'll turn it on later. Um, the video RAM was broken, a couple of chips had gone and that was causing vertical lines on the uh, CRT here. So there's a little tiny CRT, power supply and some slots for cartridges and I did get with the machine a couple of cartridges and they sort of look like this. This one's a 4K RAM cartridge which has battery backup and this one is a 16K dynamic RAM cartridge which doesn't have battery backup. And the strange thing about these cartridges is that, let's put that there a minute, is that it is all the RAM for the system. So in these slots you've got all the RAM for the uh, the processor which is a Z80 and that means the stack and all the program storage is stored in here which is a bit unusual it means if you get one of these machines and you haven't got a cartridge you can't actually start it up one of the reasons why uh, I'm not actually going to power this machine up is that the uh, keyboard isn't connected because I've been doing a little bit of work on it there are a few things that needed looking at. Uh, one of the first things was that it was actually set up for 110 volts AC not 2, 230, 240 which is what we use here in the UK. Turns out that the power supply which is over here actually has a jumper link and if that wire link is in place then it's set up for 110 and if you cut that wire link it's set up for 240 which is really convenient cut the link and it was fine so this now runs on 240 volts rather than uh, 110. The other thing that needed fixing was the display really so uh, I'll take the cover off and uh, go over what I did to fix it which is a temporary fix at the moment but uh, I'm hoping to make it more of a permanent fix but that is a work in progress. So ordinarily the top is screwed on I've had the top of this thing off so many times that uh, I haven't actually bothered putting the screws back in. So you can see over here the power supply, the four slots. There's usually a bit of um, plastic that fits in here. Here it is. And it sort of covers the power supply and um, tidies up the slots a little bit. And you've got the main board here and underneath there's an option board which has got printer ports and a cassette output and so on and the VDU is over here so you've got the CRT and the power supply and uh, the VDU circuitry. The uh, main board's got a Z80 here, there's a video controller, a couple of ROM chips and over here you've got the video RAM and that's the only RAM in the system and it is not used for program storage at all, it is dedicated video RAM. So that's there. I'll move the camera a bit and you can see down here that two of the RAM chips which were the faulty ones have been removed and they've been replaced with Raspberry Pi Picos. So these Picos are running a program which emulates one of these uh, 4K by 1 bit RAM chips. I've taken the chips out, I wasn't too sure which ones were broken originally so I've got three chips removed, three sockets put in and I've got an original chip here and two Picos. That now works so the program for the Pico works as a RAM chip. Due to the lack of GPIOs on the Pico I can't actually replace all these chips with one Pico. It's capable of doing it if I had one more GPIO I think it was. So I may do that, I may replace all these chips with a PCB which replaces the entire video RAM in one go but it's going to have to be a PCB that uses the RP2040 rather than a Pico because then you get more GPIOs and there's enough to do it. 
what's interesting about this layout though is this chip here. So this chip is in a socket and I use that term quite loosely because I don't think it is just a socket. I think, well, so originally I saw this board and it had lines on the display and I thought, oh, okay, RAM chip's gone. Oh, and opened it up and saw this chip in a socket. So I thought, oh, someone's been in here fixing things. Turns out, no, if you look online at photos of the main board of this machine, they've all got this chip in a socket. So I suspect there's a PCB fault and this socket actually rewires something and corrects that error so that you can plug the RAM chip in here. So what I will probably have to do is take that out and find out what that error was and take account for that in a PCB that replaces all these chips if I do one of those. I may do one, I may not. Um, one of the reasons for doing that is that I suspect these chips will slowly fail over time so they're going to have to be replaced with something. They could be replaced with this Pico arrangement here. So I am working on making a PCB to replace this arrangement but uh, the first revision of that board didn't work. It's a very very small area to actually fit in because I want to actually replace any chips that fail individually and you haven't got much width there. So that's a work in progress. Interestingly, this is just a Pico wired to um, some headers here which plug into a socket. This is a Z80 5 volt system and the Raspberry Pi Pico is a 3.3 volt microcontroller, the RP2040, but it turns out that it looks like the GPIOs are actually 5 volt tolerant when they're set up as inputs and uh, when you're operating as a RAM emulator, most of your GPIOs are inputs. This one's only got a couple of outputs for, well actually one output for the data out. It's got a data inline and a data outline on the chip, so two data lines even though it's a one bit device. So I've been running these for hours and they seem perfectly fine, so it does look like the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico is actually 5 volt tolerant. So we'll see how long they last. I mean I've had this on every day for several weeks now and seems fine. So obviously not having to put level shifters on there makes the layout of that PCB much easier and I think, it would, well, I, I, there's quite a lot of sort of height I suppose if you treat that as width. You've got very little width on the PCB because you're trying to replace a, an 18 pin dip but you've got quite a lot of this direction space so you could probably fit them all in a small package but it would be even more challenging and it's quite tight that PCB. So I fixed that and then I thought I'd turn my hand to uh, seeing if I could make some some memory cartridges so uh, I did do and there's one here so this is the equivalent of one of the cartridges that I just showed you the originals. Well that doesn't really match any of them because the originals were 4K or 16K and this one's got jumpers. It can be uh, any multiple of 4K up to 32K um, because even though there's only 16K's worth of address lines on here using some logic you can infer A14 and actually end up with a 32K card which is um, more than you could have in the original um, cartridge system. So this is based on a RAM chip. There's a 32K RAM chip here and some level shifters because it's a 3.3 volt device and um, it's battery backed here. So this is actually storing programs at the moment. And uh, you can set it up to be uh, say a 4K card here and then plug another one into another slot next to it because it passes on some selection lines and that's what these jumpers are here. And that works. We'll have a look at that later on. So uh, that was one cartridge. The other one that I did, so that is basically a RAM cartridge. You can, you can use it as the original cartridge and basically it just stores the programs for you. Um, doesn't do anything fancy really. Doesn't do anything more than the original cartridges other than you can have over 16k um, up to 32k of storage on there which the original cartridges couldn't do. This one 
is a bit more complicated. Um, this is a cartridge that has two picos. So over here we've got a pico, and one of the cores is used to actually emulate memory. So that's doing the business work of the cartridge. And um, up here there's some jumpers to do selection stuff. And uh, for version two of this card, there is a version two already. Um, those jumpers are different. I've done it actually in hardware and hopefully that will work. I haven't built one of those yet. But this card can only be a 4K card at the moment. It can't be anything larger. Version 2 will enable larger sizes. The Pico is capable of handling much larger um, emulation sizes than 4K. So going up to 32 or whatever, up to 128K wouldn't be a problem for it. So this Pico here basically handles the bus um, interface and emulating RAM or ROM. You could get ROM cartridges and this could do ROM. Um, this Pico here is more user interface. I've got a little OLED display here and some buttons and also an SD card so you can save and load images of cartridges on the SD card there. And they communicate with each other. Um, the second core of each Pico uh, runs a link from this one to this one and the data is continually streamed from this Pico to this Pico over um, actually a transputer link. I uh, did an emulation of the transputer on a Pico and um, decided that it was a pretty good way of streaming data from one Pico to another so I actually use the transputer link protocol to send data from here to here and from here to here and um, that's all done with PIOs so even though there's a core here that is sort of dedicated to that link and one here the actual transfer of data and the protocol itself is handled using the um, PIO facility on the Picos and uh, this does work uh, I have uh, this button here um, once it's up and running you press that button and it will capture the latest image that has been streamed over from this um, Pico here. So you sort of stop using, you stop using the keyboard and the memory in the cartridge then is sort of fixed because at that point you could pull it out. Um, it's only if you're editing or running a program that you really wouldn't want to pull this out during operation. You want to wait for it to stop doing stuff and then you can snapshot the data. It only takes, I think it was for 4K, it's about 17 milliseconds or something to send, stream the entire data over the link and that's not running the fastest speed on the transputer link that it could operate at. I think it's 10 uh, mega samples or 10 mega board at the moment and it can probably easily run at 20 and maybe higher. So that works as well and uh, I'd like to get that working as a ROM cartridge as well but I haven't got any ROM images for ROM cartridges and I don't know how that works so uh, I haven't been able to do that at the moment. But that, that should be possible. Um, while I was trying to get this one working, so I had that plugged in there, um, I also made this, which fits on that way, which um, is a Pico <laughs> on uh, an IC clip, and that is essentially tracing the bus, so I can get the address and data bus and a couple of other signals. Uh, off the bus of the Z80. Again, no level shifters because it's all inputs. It's a logic analyzer, and that's worked fair. Oh, it's worked quite well. Once I sorted out the connection problem, because I think the pins were tarnished on the 40-year-old Z80. But uh, yeah, it's it's not lost on me that uh, this plus the two picos on the RAM chip plus the two picos in here are vastly more powerful than the. Uh, than the FX9000P itself, but uh, that's not really the point. The point is to get this this one working again, and also add features to it. So you could you could actually upload and download images here through the SD card instead of having to attach a cassette interface or something like that. So uh, yeah, that was a little side effect. It's based on the um, example logic analyzer in the Pico examples uh, stuff on the web. Raspberry Pi. That wouldn't have been good. That nearly fell into the power supply. So I'll uh, I'll power it up. I'll put the keyboard back on. Power it up. I've actually got a reset switch here, which I'll explain later on, which isn't necessary. 
due to an interesting feature of the code of this machine. I'll stick the lid and keyboard on and um, we'll actually run it and have a look at some of these cartridges.